In this video, we'll learn about how to compute the average rate of change of a function. So the definition of the average rate of change of a function is really just a formula that we have to remember. So when we're asked for the average rate of change, we'll always be given two points. We'll be asked for the average rate of change from a given point, say x equals a, to another point, x equals b. And the way that we compute that is we simply compute f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So what's important to keep in mind here is that on the top, my b comes first, and on the bottom, my b comes first. And on the bottom, my a comes second, and on the bottom, my a comes second. So it's really important that I keep that order the same. Now, what we can do is it's okay to get these mixed up. If we instead write f of a minus f of b, if we get the order on the top backwards, then all we have to do differently is make sure that the order on the bottom is also switched. So it's okay to write f of a minus f of b divided by a minus b. That's actually the same fraction, just written two different ways. Okay, so let's do some examples. Let's find the average rate of change of f of x equals 4x minus x squared. First, let's do it from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So this x equals 1, I'm going to call that my a, and this x equals 2, I'm going to call that my b. So the first thing I need to do, if I'm going to compute my average rate of change, which is going to be f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a, is I need to figure out what f of b and f of a are. So let's do that. So f of a, that's f of 1, and f of 1 is going to be 4 times 1 minus 1 squared. That works out to be 3. f of b, what's that? Well, that's going to be f of 2, so that'll be 4 times 2 minus 2 squared. And that works out to be 4. So now all I have to do is plug all of the stuff that I figured out into my function. So f of b minus f of a, that's going to be 4 minus 3 on the top. And then b minus a on the bottom is going to be 2 minus 1. And again, notice that I kept my order the same. f of b got written first on the top of my fraction. And b got written first on the bottom of my fraction. So as long as I keep that order the same, I'll be in good shape. So on the top I have 4 minus 3, that's 1. On the bottom I have 2 minus 1, that's 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1, and that's my answer. Okay, let's do the second one. What about the average rate of change from x equals negative 1? I'll call that a. To x equals 6, I'll call that b. And again, I'm calling the first point a and the second point b, but if I got that switched, if I called negative 1 b and 6 a, I could still get the right answer as long as I keep my order the same on the top as I do on the bottom. So what's f of a and what's f of b? Well, f of a is going to be f of negative 1. That's going to be 4 times negative 1 minus negative 1 squared. We've got to be careful with our minus signs here. But that works out to be negative 5. And then if we plug in f of b, that's going to be f of 6. That's going to be 4 times 6 minus 6 squared, and that works out to be negative 12. All right, so what's my average rate of change this time? So again, it's f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. So plugging in everything I know, f of b is negative 12. f of a is negative 5. On the bottom, I've got b minus a. My b is 6, and my a is negative 1. So again, lots of negative signs here, but we just got to be careful. On the top, I have negative 12 minus minus 5. That's going to be negative 12 plus 5. And on the bottom, I have 6 minus minus 1, so that's 6 plus 1. So on the top, I get negative 12 plus 5, that's negative 7. On the bottom, I get 6 plus 1, that's positive 7. Negative 7 divided by 7 turns out to be negative 1, and that's our answer. 